Now that all the components have been mounted, we're going to go ahead and start connecting these boards together. So before we do that, we're going to go ahead and tin the pads. So what you're going to do is you're going to touch the pad with a soldering iron and you're going to add solder. And that's pretty much it. And go ahead and do that to both sides, this side and that side. So let me go ahead and quickly show that process. So take your soldering iron, touch it to the pad, add some solder, and that's it. Go ahead and do that to all of these pads here on the right and on the left. So you want to have something that kind of looks like this. And go ahead and do that to these other three boards. So right now we have these pads and these pads tinned. And actually it's also a good idea to go ahead and tin these pads too. Uh, so just the same process as here, but uh, these are slightly smaller pads. So you have to be a little bit more careful when you are tinning these pads. So it's the same principle, just apply, apply heat and then apply solder and just drag your soldering iron and that's pretty much it. So do that to the top and bottom of these, of these pads too. So a completed uh, circuit board should look something like this. We have tin this side, this side, this side, and that side. So I'm going to go ahead and tin the top and bottom of these other three boards. So now that all the pads on these driver matrix driver boards have been tinned, we're going to go ahead and start connecting this board to this board, this board to this board, and this board to this board. So you will need to connect them as such. So you have a notch here facing this way. This will go to a main control board, not not these boards. So uh, the very one on the very left here, this will we will have wires going off to the side here uh, for data to be sent to this chip, and then the data will go all the way down until it reaches the very last matrix driver. So to connect these boards, you need to connect all these pads together. So we have a data here, data there. Connect them. We have a CLK here, and we have a CLK there. Connect them along with the CS, the V- minus, and the V+. Plus. So we're going to go ahead and connect all these pads together. So again, we're going to go ahead and grab our 50 conductor wire here. And you'll need about, about 2 inches. 2 inches is a good length. Or actually, this is more of an inch and a half. Uh, so yeah, between 2 and 1.5 uh, inches is what you're looking for. So you will need to make a five conductor uh, section. So count off five here. There's five, and then we will need three of these. So now we have three pieces, and each one of these pieces has five conductors in it. So now we're gonna go ahead and strip off about somewhere around uh, a quarter inch somewhere between an eighth of an a and a quarter of an inch. So now we're going to go ahead and slightly separate all these wires. So just, just like so. So there's one side and I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. Try not to separate them down all the way, but yeah, so about maybe around three-fourths of an inch is good, so something like that. So there we go, there's one section done, I'm going to go ahead and do it to the other two. So now we're going to go ahead and solder one of these uh, pieces of wire to one board, and then connect it to the other one. So what you're going to need to do is just uh, wire by wire connect these wires to these pads. So in order to do that, take your wire, align it, and touch it with a soldering iron. And it should, just like that, connect. So go ahead and do that to the other four pads. So here's one wire connected to one matrix driver. We're going to go ahead and connect it to the second one. So you see we have a notch here and no notch here on the chip. So we're going to go ahead and connect this notch to the end that does not have a notch. So like so. 
So what you want to do is connect data to data, clock to clock, CS to CS, V minus to V minus, and V plus to V plus. So connect the wires directly across. So I have the top one here data, and now I'm going to connect the top one here to the data here. So here we have two chips connected together. We have a notch here, and we have a notch here on the chips. So we'll have data flowing from this chip to this chip, down to this chip, down to that chip. So I'm going to go ahead and solder this wire here, and then this matrix driver here, and then another wire, and then another matrix this way, so that all these matrices are aligned this way. So all the capacitors face uh, that way, and all the notches face that way. So yeah. So now we have these matrix driver boards connected uh, once another. So we have a notch here, 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 and here. So if you connect this incorrectly, the matrix won't work. So yeah, make sure you have these matrices uh, properly aligned. So the way this works is that uh, a microcontroller chip sends data to this board, then that data goes to this board, and then to this board, and then to this board. So you'll have to add uh, another section of wire here, which I will do right now. So you'll need your flat, your, uh, flat ribbon cable, and you'll need uh, somewhere around maybe like four or five inches of wire. And then you'll need another five uh, pins or you'll need another five connectors so there we go we have a five wire cable here that's maybe like four or five inches in length so we're going to go ahead and strip the insulation off both ends and then we're going to go ahead and splice apart these wires And then we're going to go ahead and connect the wires like so. So we'll, ha we'll connect the data, the CLK, the CS, the V minus, and the V plus to this wire here. So now we have the matrix driver boards complete and all connected and pretty much ready to go. So we have one more thing to assemble. We I have to assemble the control board that powers all of these matrix drivers. And we also have to assemble the power module, which I will do right now. So now that uh, these matrix driver boards are done, we're going to start working on the control board, which comes like this, and it looks like this. So for this, you will need a 16 megahertz crystal, two 22 pico farad capacitors, 1.1 microfarad capacitor, 1 10 microfarad capacitor, two 1K resistors, and an LED. So we're going to start by first uh, taking the 16 megahertz crystal and placing it in this spot here. So just place it in and then bend the leads up and out of the way. And then go ahead and take your 22 picofarad capacitors and place them here. Okay, so we have the 22 picofarad capacitors and 16 megahertz crystal placed, and now we're going to go ahead and flip this board over and solder them into place. These are soldered, we're going to go ahead and trim off the leads. So that now that these are soldered and the leads are trimmed, we're going to go ahead and mount the LED and the two 1K resistors. So we're going to start with the LED, and you should note that an LED has a longer lead and a shorter lead, along with a flat side and a rounded side. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and mount the shorter lead on the left and the longer lead on the right, and then just put it in the board like that, and then bend the pins up 
and the LED is mounted. And now we take the 1K resistors, bend them into a U shape, and we place them onto the board like so. So once these are mounted, we're going to go ahead and flip over this board and solder them into place. And with those components soldered, we're going to go ahead and trim off the leads. Alright, and then the last two things we need to do is solder the 0.1 microfarad and the 10 microfarad capacitors. So we're going to start with the 0.1 microfarad capacitor. It looks like this. Well, mine looks like that. Yours might look a little bit different but we're going to go ahead and mount it into this slot here. So just take it and just push it through. And then bend the leads out of the way. And then we're going to mount the 10 microfarad capacitor. So again, this capacitor has a long lead and a short lead, and it matters which way you put it in. So if you look on the board here, you'll see a little minus and a little plus here. So what you want to do is line up the shorter lead with the minus and the longer lead with the plus. So place it like so. And you can also see a negative uh, designation uh, line here. So mount it like so, solder into place. and then trim the leads. Alright, so all of these components have been mounted and now we're going to go ahead and tin these leads. So what you want to do is get solder onto all these pads here so that it's easier to solder to later. So to do that, take your soldering iron, take your solder, heat up the pad, heat up the solder, and just like that, we have little blobs of solder on all these pads here. And then do the same to this side here. Alright, so the control board is done, and we're going to move on to making the power board.